Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT, and if you're watching, you know what time it is. It's time for me to take on Anime, we anime Weed Beard in round two of the Top Tier Tactics Tournament, Magic 2014, August Tournament. And it's time to duel. I'm playing Sliverhive. I believe he's playing Firewave, and we uh, have both agreed that we don't have a lot of experience pitting our particular decks against one another. Now, I would consider this a very good starting hand against Firewave, so I'm going to keep it. And the main thing I did with the Sliver Hive against Fire Wave here is I put in extra enchantments, okay? I put in more Megantic Slivers to kind of go for like a late game, having things, creatures that are too big to burn. Because if there's anything that I need to worry about is, you know, having my creatures being hit for burn at key moments, having my key slivers being taken out, and essentially just losing the game because I don't have my key slivers. Now, I don't believe Fire Wave has a lot of turn one plays, so I'm not too concerned there. Nothing to really worry about having a path to exile. There's an Armageddon. There's an Armageddon. He might have a hasty dude, turn three, but I also have a hasty dude in my turn three comes first. The other thing I threw in more face fetters for a couple reasons. One is it gains me life. Okay, great. So that'll help against burn. Two is it stops creatures from attacking and blocking. It also to stops them from using abilities. So I can shut down like his um, Titans or anything like that. And hopefully he does not have instant speed removal here, although it's always possible. Always possible. Always possible. So I'm just going to drop the Blur Swiper and attempt to swing in for two. Now if I were him, I don't know even if I had instant speed removal if I would kill Blur Sliver. I probably would. But he knows that there's a lot scarier Slivers in his deck. There's much scarier Slivers in his deck uh, against him. Now Blur Sliver is great because just having haste on the board means that he has to reserve something. He has Sorcery Speed Burn. He has Instant Speed Burn. And if he doesn't have Instant Speed Burn, he's not ready. But here we go. Chandra's Phoenix. Is he going to swing in for two? He might swing in for two, but I'm going to be swinging in for um, more than two right now. And, of course, Path to Exile. I took out Shocks. I only have Path to Exiles and Fates Fetters in here now because this Exiles creatures, this just um, stops them from doing things. So creatures like this would normally go to the graveyard and come back over and over again and be super annoying. Um, not really a fan of that. So let's see here. I'm going to drop Steel Form Sliver. Got it. And I'm swinging for four. And then what's going to happen is end of his next turn, depending on what he plays, right? Depending on what he plays, end of his next turn, I'm going to path to exile him, his creature. I'm going to exile this creature, unless he plays a better creature, of course. Then he's going to have no creatures on board. He's going to get ramps and land, and then I'm going to Armageddon. And he, then we're not going to have any lands. I'm going to have two creatures on board, and he's going to have none. And if he's saving up for an Inferno Titan or anything like that, then just too bad, too bad he doesn't get Inferno Titan. So let's see what he does. If he leaves it back to block, I'm still going to get rid of it. And if I Armageddon, um, Armageddon, pretty cool. Armageddon's a cool guy. Look at that. Why? I don't. This doesn't really represent Armageddon to me in any way, but it represents lands being destroyed. Fine. Got Predatory Sliver, and here he goes with Disintegrate, dealing three damage to target creature. Um, let's see here. So he is gonna get rid of this thing. Okay, fine. So my Slivers will no longer have haste. Slivers will no longer have haste. So he's going to attack here. Now, I could just path it now, which I think I'll do so I don't take this 2 damage. And yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just path it now. Get rid of it now. Don't need to take the 2 damage. I will only have a 2-3 creature on the board. However, 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 now he's got his 5 lands out there. He's got 5 cards in hand. I don't know if he's got lands or whatever. I don't really have lands. I have another face fetters. Fuck. Like, am I really afraid of what he's gonna do? He could just burn my stuff. See, I don't, I don't really know if I, if that was the best call. Now, maybe I should just face that at him. I'm making bad decisions. Could Armageddon though. What the problem is though, he's sitting on five lands. If he hits six lands, he gets Titan. Then again, if he gets Titan, I could just face fetters. But if I Armageddon, depending what he gets for land. Ooh, this is such a tough call. This is such a tough call. What could he? If he burns my guy, I have nothing. If he burns my guy, I have absolutely nothing. <sighs> but if he plays Titan, then he kills my guy, and then I face Fetters, and I have nothing. All right, Armageddon it is. All right, so if he plays Titan, my guy's screwed. I want to keep my board position. want to keep my board position. Now, he, he could play a Mountain and get his uh, four damage on my guy. Now, watch. He's going to draw all lanes. I'm going to draw nothing. Which, um, that would be the downside of casting Armageddon when you got no hand cards in hand. Um, yep. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to screw myself here because I got greedy. I got greedy. Even though I had two answers in my hand. We'll see. Not necessarily end of world. 
But if I don't draw into lands and he gets like a single burn spell, then I'm in a lot of trouble. And here he goes, two lands and I got none. I got none! Fuck! Fuck! I know he's got burn. Just how much burn does he have? And I got nothing. Oh my god! Oh my god! My greedy Armageddon is going to cost me the match. It's going to cost me the match. Fuck. Okay. So see, I guess right now it could have been like, alright, I'll face Fetter whatever he plays, then I'll face Fetter whatever he plays again. And then he gets, alright, this is not scary yet. He doesn't own any creatures, so I don't have to worry about that. He's still on a clock. He's got four turns. He Obviously, if he had burn, he probably would have killed this thing already. So he probably doesn't have it. I need land. That's a land. That is a land. I need a forest... Preferably, preferably need to top deck into a forest. But even just hitting a land is always good. Now, of course, taking the shocks out of my deck, feeling kind of bad about it now. Savage Beating, by the way, absolutely brutal finisher card. Absolutely brutal. I never even noticed these guys in the background before. I was always like, hey, this guy's got some big fists up front. So he's sitting on three lands, got to figure out what to do. Does he have a creature that's like a small, you know, if he plays a small creature, then he can equip it next turn. Okay, so he's going to deal 4 damage to that guy. Fuck. Fuck. And now he's got the board position. The cool thing is I could, once I get enough mana, cast Faith's Fetters on his artifact, then it won't be able to equip. But if I don't have any creatures, it doesn't matter. I really need to draw a forest. And having a 1-1 one, one on the board, not too scary. Although he's only a 6 life. Only a 6 life. Someone is messaging me on Steam. Don't message me. Don't message me now. Oh, Fuck. All right, he's definitely going to keep that thing back. Oh, God damn it. God damn it. That Armageddon, I think, was like the worst play I've ever made in my life. I think that was the worst play I've ever made in my entire life. Okay. Now, if I get if I get a forest, uh, not in that bad of a position. Hey! 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 All right, let's attack for two. Attacking for two. He's going to have to block. He doesn't want to take the damage. He's going to block here, do one damage to my face. Unless he messes up and thinks that it does damage because he doesn't realize about the first strike damage. Please mess up. Nope, he's got it to my face. He's going to equip here. Fire Shrieker. Give that thing double strike, which would make it a 2-2 two -two double strike. Then he could swing in for four, but he will have to spend two mana to equip. He's got two mana left. If, I, if he does that and he doesn't have any burn, I got Predatory Sliver to swing in for six next turn. So he will be equipping. Does he swing in for the attack? Does he swing in for the attack? Depends if he's got burn in his hand or not. And if it costs two mana or he's got another blocker. The problem is even at four damage attack, okay, he does have a blocker. Haste. So he's probably going to swing in, put me down to nine. But I don't know. That's risky. He might not do it. He might not do it. What he doesn't know, Predatory Sliver is going to be mean. See, he right now, he thinks that this can trade. He thinks that this is going to trade. It will still trade. But uh, I'm going to do a little more damage first. Oh, my guys have first strike. Okay. My guys have first strike. His guys have first strike. Predatory Sliver is hitting the board. And I really need lands. I really should not have played Armageddon. I wonder where the last two cards in his hand are, though, because he's got these low casting cost cards. Just going to swing in here. He's got... if. I feel like he has to block both of them. He can't afford to take let three damage go through. If he lets three damage go through, there's this thing sitting around next turn swinging for another three damage. So this is not... He's going to be able to kill one of these creatures. Um, if I were him... Oh, God. I don't even know what I would kill. Kill Predatory? Then things... To, yep. All right. That's what he's going to do. He's going to let the three damage go through. He's going to leave the Slith... And he's going to let three damage go through. Okay, and I have three, three, threes on the board. So, wait, what? Why did my guy... Oh! Oh, because the double strike, it died during the first strike phase because it's only 2-2. Two, two. Holy shit. Oh, he thought he was going to trade. I thought it was going to trade, too. Okay. Now, this is just... I don't understand why he would play that. Now, he's just, like, toying around. That's it. I think the game's over. The game's over. Everything does du double damage now. So even though I messed up and played that Armageddon when I shouldn't have played it, should not have played it. Should not have played it. Now all these guys are 6 threes effectively. Finishing up game one, going to Wingspan TT. Game one, going to Wingspan TT. Look at this guy. Oh my god, that mascara. Magic mascara. Give it to me, bro. Give it to me. So will we be going to game two or does he want a sideboard? Let's see it. 
Let's see, I feel pretty confident about my deck build. I was really on the fence about whether or not to include Armageddon's because I know... Um, should have waited instead of using the front, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Tough call, tough call. Let's go into game two, anime, weird, weed, beard. Um, all right, this hand sucks. This hand sucks, so we're drawing a new hand. This hand is decent, so I'm going to keep it. I only got two lands, but I'm on the draw, and I have turn one and turn two and turn three and four and five play, so I'm going to keep it. Normally, not a huge fan of keeping two land hands. However, I feel like basically I'm going to have like three or four draws before it matters, so we'll see. Three or four draws. Oh, God. Oh, no. He doesn't have turn one play. Always good. Always good for me. Plane's going down first, so I can cast Path of Exile next turn. And I hit every color land drop. Every color. Now, here, I'm going to play the planes first. I have Path to Exile. It also threatens Path to Exile. So, even if I didn't have it, and there was no reason that I would choose a specific land, I would probably put down a Plains or a Mountain first instead of Forest. So, he thinks that I have Shock or Path to Exile. So, just a little, just a little tip there to any aspiring... Magic Gurus. So let's see, we got Predatory Sliver. We got Steel Form Sliver. I don't necessarily like Steel Form Sliver that much normally, but against a burn deck, giving all your guys um, plus one toughness definitely has some power. We got Armageddon, aka the card that almost cost me a game because I'm an idiot last time. And Thorncaster Sliver, aka this game wins, this card wins the game. Now, this card is not as powerful against Fire Wave. For a couple of reasons. One is that this card is the most powerful when you have tons of slivers. When you can attack, when you when you have like three or four slivers on the board already, when you drop this guy and you swing in and deal tons of damage, that's great. But when you only have one or two slivers on the board, really not that good. Flames of Firebrand. So he's going to be doing two to my sliver and one to me. He has four cards left in hand. He's got one one left on the board. Okay. All right. And that was actually a good play for him. I mean, if I drop the steel for him next play... It's not like he could have gotten a two for one. So he gets he gets the one damage to my face plus the one damage attack uncontested from the arsonist. Good, good, good. Good for him. I'm really proud of him. The other thing I took out of this deck, by the way, is Fiery Justice. I took this out of the red matchup for a couple of reasons. One is that red does not have a lot of scary, um, low toughness creatures. It's not like uh, Avacyn's Glory where he's got Champion of the Parish and all stuff like that. All these, like... 1-1, one, 2-2 one, two, two creatures I'm really afraid of. Like, he's got these things, and it would be great to hit them, but at the same time, if I kill this thing, it hurts me. If I kill this thing, it just comes back next turn. So I'm not, like, a big, big, big proponent of, uh, I don't know, of, of just killing off his creatures one time. That's why I like the paths. That's why I like the, uh, okay, that's good. Blur Sliver's good, swinging with both of those creatures. And I'll leave one planes for Path to Exile. And I, I'm actually going to play the planes um, afterwards, just in case the game messed up and assigned the mana colors wrong. Uh, so that's not something I would do in normal Magic necessarily, but something I do want to do here. Um, let's see how he blocks. He's probably not going to block. There's no point to blocking. If I were him, I wouldn't block. There's literally no point to blocking. And this is something I think a lot of players make a mistake where they, okay, he's, he is going to block. All right, fine. I, I would say this is a mistake for a couple of reasons, because let's say he just chump blocked for two, two damage. So basically, he used his Goblin Arsonist, the whole card, he gave it up in order to deal one damage to me and prevent two damage to him. But, but, but the thing is, let's say I get a Megantic Sliver or some other scary Sliver on the board, and this thing becomes a 5-5 five, five or 4-4 four, four or something like that, then he could chump block and what is, so what is he going to do here? So he is going to change his Outrage, my guy, my Blur Sliver. I could path it in response, but I don't think there's, I don't need the land that bad, so fine. Fine. Now, I could path his, uh, this thing in end of turn, because unlike last time, I actually have land. Unlike last time, I actually have land. I'm not ahead in life. The question is, how much of an advantage will I get? I feel like I want to get Thorncaster down first, so I'll just take the damage. I'm not going to path it. Two damage is not that big of a deal. I need to get the Thorncaster on the board. Um, force him to use some burn. Okay. All right. Whew. All right. Get the Thorncaster on the board. 
get an extra one damage in free. If he doesn't kill Thorn Thorncaster by next turn, then his bird, then it's bye bye birdie. Can just deal it to players. Make sure it's him. Then it's bye bye birdie. Bird can uh, go to hell. Still have Pat to exile. And I'm sitting on one lane in hand in case I need to Armageddon. Now, if he doesn't play, if he plays something scary this turn, I mean, it really depends what he plays. But I have the option. Okay, now he's got Disintegrate. Now, all right, so now he's happy he saved Disintegrate. He's down to three cards. We are, he is winning the life race right now. He is winning the life race. Do I have two planes on the board? I do. I could, in theory, um, path his guy and Armageddon this upcoming turn. And I think that's what I'm going to do, because I do have two lands here, so I'm feeling pretty good about outdrawing him on the lands department. So let's do that. So we'll path this guy. Great. He's going to go get a land, then he's like, yay, I got a land. Yay, I got a land. I thought it was really slick, by the way, for Wizard of the Coast to use Path to Exile as a removal spell and then throw Arm again in this deck. And by the way, I would have never put Arm again in a Sliver's deck. Like It would have just never even occurred to me that that was like a thing. That that was like a thing you could do. And alright, I'm going to hit my land drop. And I got a land drop next turn. So two mountains in a row. Two mountains in a row. He might have land. He does not have land. Boom. Boom. He's going to be eating at least like six damage off of this thing. He and I am hitting the land drops. I'm hitting the land drops. Armageddon, one of the least fun uh, cards ever printed. This card basically reads, If you have a better board set, you win the game. Lose all friends, they cannot be regenerated this turn. That's basically what this, this card reads. Um, if you're playing in like a casual group with your friends, you play Armageddon, you're going to have a bad time. They are not going to stand for that shit. Grim Lava Man's on the board. Not a threat until next turn. He's going to have to take it. But he could block and then use the ability to hit Steel Form. Of course, if I top deck into a Sliver, that'd be great. So I'm just going to swing in now. So he will have, uh, he will have the... Not the advantage, I would say. He's going to have to use up his only one mana. So basically, if he blocks with Grim Level Mancer next turn when I attack, and then activates the ability once blockers are declared to put the two damage down and then the one combat damage on the stack. Uh, not on the stack, per se. Okay, another Grim Lava Mancer. Okay, now that's bad. Now that's bad. Now I'm in a really bad situation. Now he's going to use the ability on me? He's really going to use it right now? That's bad. I wouldn't do that. I would not do that. He's going to try to burn me out. I don't know. He could kill my sliver instead. But next turn, he's going to deal 4 damage to me. Um, what do I got? Fuck! Fuck! I need to get a planes. I need to get a planes. If I win this game, again, by the way, after like post-Armageddon stuff, it'd be pretty, be pretty funny. I was going to hit all these land drops. Like, What would happen if I didn't play the Armageddon? So I hit all these land drops. Then I'm going to draw face fetters like around now. He's sitting on tons of cards though. He deals 4 damage to me. I cannot, I don't, I don't understand why he's activating these abilities now. Like, if he has lethal burn, he, do, he can't have lethal burn. Oh, he's going to, okay, he's going to double it. Alright, got it. I don't know. Don't know. I really need to top deck a planes. Like, I need, that is the card I need to survive this game. Hopefully he, he, he is going to run out of cards in his graveyard, but... If I don't get a planes or like uh like if I get a blur sliver that'd be good, although it's just gonna die to one of these guys. He's got repeatable burn right now. Let's see, what do I got? Oh fuck. Fuck. Oh god damn it. The good thing is he only has two lands, so these things are gonna tie up his lands. Jeez. Jeez, this sucks. This sucks. This sucks. Okay. Alright. By the way, the Annihilator. Alright, and I'm the spell slinger. Damn right. Damn right. Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad comes back this weekend. Very excited. One of my favorite shows. Now, if he uses these abilities on me in my main, that's going to be bad. Um, now, I could see him having a dilemma, too, where he's got some card in his hand that costs two mana he wants to decide to use or not. Like, why would he use this ability right now? Like, why wouldn't he just wait until my turn um, to potentially... All right, he's just going to do it once. But see, if I drop something... Please be a planes. Please be a plane. He's going to swing for one. All right, so he's keeping one in his graveyard. All right, now he's going to swing for one. Then he could deal two, three damage to me next turn, plus something in his hand, maybe. Planes. Okay, a sliver. A sliver. Fine. 
It's got first strike. At least it keeps those guys back. He has to use the ability if he wants to swing in, which means his graveyard will be empty. Totally fine by me. Or he could use a burn spell in his hand, put load up his graveyard, and then swing in. <sighs> Not in a great position. Not in a great position. Um, well played by him so far. I, I have to question a couple of his plays, the timing of his Grim Lava Mancers, but overall his board state is fairly solid. Solid like a rock. Solid like a striking sliver. I mean, look at this thing. It looks like it's made out of goddamn metal. How is this thing a 1-1? One, one? Like, you're telling me a wizard from an academy who's like hasn't done a push-up in his entire life is a 1-1. One, one. And then this thing that's like the goddamn predator made out of metal. It's like the Colossus and Predator had a baby. All right. This is the part where I need face fetters to happen. Like, this is the part where it has to happen. It needs to happen. Come on. Swing. Swing. He could just swing with both and make me take one damage, but he's probably afraid of, like... Come on. No! No! Okay. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. Okay. I try... Th it is very... P I could survive this turn. I could survive this turn. Nope, I cannot survive this turn. One, no, I can. All right, so he's going to deal. Uh, no, it's over. It's over. It's over. It's <laughs> over. It's over. All right, one to animate. We Weed Beard. Why can't I say his name? Weed Beard and one to Wingspan TT. The king of mistime Armageddon's. It's the end of the world as we know it. Wingspan TT. With the misplays, let's go into game three. Game three. Game three. Whew. Remember, this is this is best at five. First person three wins wins. Can't spell wingspan without win. I don't like this hand. Don't like it. Because if I don't hit a third land, I got nothing. This whole hand relies on three. Okay, this is much better. Much better. Much better. Keeping this. So first turn, we'll get the striking sliver down. Stop his one ones from being a nuisance. Although Actually, most of his one ones are still a nuisance, regardless of Strike Sliver. Second turn, Terramorphic. Go get a Plains. Third turn, Forest. Hive Stirrings. Oh, see, I don't want to see this thing. Goblin Arsonist. So, I can't really attack this thing, because if it dies, it gets to deal one damage by Striking Sliver. Not cool, bro. Not cool. Now, some people just play one of these lanes. Nope, you want to play a Terramorphic, because this is the turn where I don't have anything to do. Or I don't have anything to do, so. Just gonna wait. Wait it out. Okay. Middle of his turn. Middle of his turn. Gotta get under his skin a little bit. I'm a nice guy. Such a nice guy. Alright. Hit it there. And that's the thing. I just really have no reason to just throw this guy away. He's probably I don't know if he's gonna swing into me or not. The problem is he could swing. Okay, he's actually gonna disintegrate. I, I can't believe that. I feel like if I were him I would have swung first. I mean Disintegrate to me seems like a more valuable card in the long term. Like that's something you want to keep in your hand so when the double striking sliver happens, you can burn it or when the Megantic sliver comes up. Because this is like the deck's only response to Megantic sliver, by the way. Oh, shit. Terramorph expanse. Okay. I'm going to do Hive Stirrings. I put an in indestructibility in here for a couple reasons. One is because Red, his deck has no way to deal with this card. Like, if I get this on a Megantic Sliver, and I get, like, a 6-6 six, six or 7-7 seven, seven indestructible creature, he has no way to deal with it other than a gigantic disintegrate or spending... No, he has no way to deal with it. He has no, literally nothing he can do about it. So that's why it's in the deck. I'm not a huge fan of it in general. Okay. That's annoying. Now, it's, now his things can have... Uh, his creatures can have double strike. I could next turn Pop's Face Fetters on this to prevent things from being equipped. I don't really see him equipping this thing here. The annoying thing though is that uh, the annoying thing is basically I can't attack as long as this is on the board because as long as this is on the board I would just get two for one until I draw a sliver that gives me some kind of advantage. Um, which I have plenty but still do I really want to wait for that? I could face Fetter it now, so he can't give a double strike. Then he's going to play something better. Um, so I feel like I should just wait. I should just let the board stay sit a little bit. I feel like now is not the time to press attack. I'll wait. Force him to... I mean, this thing with double strike is not scary. Because if he swings with it... Oh, wow, I take two damage. Big deal. He's probably going to cast some 
uh, flyer, some kind of, you know, phoenix or something like that. That would be bad. I feel like I need to hit two red. I have three white here. I don't need more than one green in this build of the deck. Two red would be good in case I need to top deck into any of my double red casting cost stuff. Fire Shrieker, he is attaching it. And in response, I'm going to go get a mountain. Going to go get a mountain. Going to go hiking. Like, hello. Going hiking. Went hiking once at this place in New York State called Breakneck Ridge. And I thought it's just a name. Like, that's just a name they gave it in the 1800s to make it scary. No, it was genuinely, it was a genuinely terrifying hiking experience. It was, it was challenging and terrible. And that's all I have to say about that. Okay, now he's got another goblin arsonist. God damn it. Okay. All right. Let's see. He's got four cards in hand. Jeez. Hmm. Like a fetter is the fire shrieker. I basically can't attack. Like if Fetters this guy, it doesn't really help me in any way to Fetters this guy. It just allows me to attack, which will stop him from attacking. But the problem is as soon as he gets something better, he's just going to throw a Fire Shrieker on. I could Fetters the Fire Shrieker now. And... Basically stop him from moving it for the rest of the game. Gain four life. And... Cause it'll yeah that'll it'll it'll make him he won't attack he won't attack and he can't move it and he'll just yeah let's just do that let's just this thing is bad permanent right now am I on the fire shrieker it's like I really gotta make sure I'm on the fire shrieker because I really don't want mean to enchant that other guy all right here we go come on 21 life fucking jackpot let's see here yes it appears it is correctly attached got it I don't know why is it black and white it was black and white for a second. It's weird. Okay. And I got these guys. They look like they're about to pray. Like they're looking up at God, the Sliver Queen. They're seeing her in her majestic divine visage. And right now, both of our decks are really just twiddling our thumbs. He's sitting at three land. I'm sitting at five. I really don't want to play these last two lands in case I have to. Um... Oh, god damn. That is a really good card. That is a good card. Fuck. I might have to cast Indestructibility on one of my shitty little guys. Okay, so I'm going to take two damage, fine. So the problem with Cyclops Gladiator is whenever it attacks, he can have a deal damage equal to its power to target creature. Like that would have been a really good thing to, uh, okay. So here's the thing, I could cast Predatory Sliver and play a land and put Indestructibility on it. Then I have an infinite blocker and my Slivers are stronger for the rest of the game. It's not going to help me that much, but I really don't have much else of a game plan or game plan right now. So, because otherwise he's going to swing with, with this thing and this thing next turn. He's going to kill my tokens one at a time. He's going to kill them regardless. Um, Alright, but I don't have a choice. I need to do something with the cards in my hand. And I'm getting a little mana flooded here. And again, I'm not really a big fan of like playing out all these... <sighs> I'm not a fan of this situation, but I just cannot sit here and take like 10 damage next turn. That is not like a viable game plan. That's not a game plan that ends in me winning the game. So let's see what he does. I do have plenty of removal left in my deck. I still have uh, all the other face fetters. I still have all the, all the other paths. Um, I have Megantic Sliver, which if I top deck, I can play it. It'll become a 7-7 seven, seven creature, which would be very, very delightful. And all these guys have become pretty big, whichever ones are still left alive. So I'm really lucky. He can uh, f flame break deals two damage to every creature. Okay, okay. So he's gonna get to deal two damage to me. But that was actually not so bad for me because those tokens I had, they were gonna die anyway. They were gonna die anyway. Um, he might have done it thinking that he wanted to get that thing off of here and then redo it. However, activate abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities, so he cannot move flame striker. And now he's got this thing. He can't attack with it. There's no point. I'm just going to hold these lands. There's literally no point to, to playing these lands out of my hand. Because if I get a 7 mana cost thing, I can just play it and then you know go, roll with it. If I get Armageddon, then I have two lands to play. I'm going to guess he has no lands because he's been stuck at like three lands the whole game. Fuck! That is bad. That is bad. That is bad. Alright, I can't gain life. And now he's going to attack. Why is he attacking? I don't think he understands how this works. Yeah, I'll block. 
Why wouldn't I? Does he... Does he not know how it works? My creature's indestructible. Alright. So I don't I don't know if he gets it. I'm gonna take two. Fuck, I'm a seven turn clock. I cannot gain life. <sighs> Alright. Could play Terramorphic. And go search out something. Thin my deck. I got 44 cards in my deck. So if I play Terramorphic and remove a land, it's one out of 44. So it's like a... Oh my god. It'll increase the odds that I draw a non-land card by like 2%. I'm willing to take that risk. I'm willing to take that risk. Like, I don't really need the land, but what I definitely don't need is to draw another land. Like, I don't need to draw another land. That would be very bad for me. I need solutions right now. And unfortunately, uh, because this thing now exists, I don't... Life gain will not get me out of this. I cannot life gain my way out of this. I, I can't get another face fetters and get my way. I can drop a face fetters and make this thing so it can't block, and then go attack or block and do other stuff. But I am in a world of hurt. I got six turns to live. I got six turns to come up with a solution. If I top deck Megantic Sliver, that would be absolutely peachy. Peachy, peachy. One thing I was thinking about putting in this deck was Lifeline, because I figured Red, he's got lots of removal, but I also thought it could hurt me a lot, because he's got Goblin Arsonist and shit like that. So I don't know why he's continually attacking. He's leaving himself open, because if I get Blur Sliver, he has no blocker left. Like, I, I can just attack in. Okay. Untap all creatures. The attack this turn. And you get another combat phase. Is he going to attack again? Because this creature doesn't die. It's indestructible. That's... It can't die. It cannot die. It can go down to zero toughness. It doesn't take... It doesn't get placed in graveyards as a... As an effect of taking lethal damage. That's what indestructibility in part does. Oh, going down 10. Fuck. Hey, must be the money. All right. So this is something I need to do right now. I need to start out damaging him right now. It's time for the damage race. Okay. Time for the damage race. Time for the damage race. Now, I did help him there. He did get land. He's been kind of mana screwed. But now it's time for the damage race. Okay, so now I'm doing 4 damage a turn, he's dealing 2 damage a turn. I'm on a 5 turn clock, he's on a 4 turn clock, now a 3 turn clock. He needs to get a blocker, a blocker that can deal with an indestructible creature. Oh, god damn it. Ooh, pretty animations, you saw that? Ooh. I have Magma Phoenixes, by the way, really cool card. That is bad, that is really bad for me. I cannot do anything about that card. I can't block it. Even if I could kill it, it would hurt me a lot, like... If I could have pathed that, that would have been really good. So, he might even just kill it. He might swing. If he swings at me and then kills his own creature, I lose the game. That would be bad. Will he block? It doesn't matter if he blocks or not. The creature is indestructible. I'm just trying to trick him into thinking I have some kind of combat trick. Okay. So, here's what happens. Like, if he has three damage and burn, next turn what he'll do is he'll swing in for three. He'll bring me down to five. Then he'll burn this thing. Deal 3 damage to each creature and player, bring me down 2, and then during my upkeep, I take 2 damage from Sulfuric Vortex, so I lose. Or, if he has damage to my face, then I lose. Which is definitely possible. I'm going to have to let him to draw... I don't have a choice. I have to let him draw 3 cards. Let him draw 3 cards, or I take 5 damage. Huh, well, not a big fan of that. Browbeat, by the way. Love this card. Love this card. I really wish he had accidentally cast it on me to draw three cards. But right now I am looking at a losing game unless I top deck <sighs> I'm trying to think what could I possibly top deck that would get me out of this shit. Is there anything I could draw? Like Megantic Sliver is not good enough. It would force him to block. This is going to put me down to five. And I am totally in the red zone. He just drew three cards. Like I'm fucked. I'm totally fucked. Whatever he has is enough to kill me. Okay, going down to three life. Okay, it is Megantic Sliver. It is Megantic Sliver. So I can attack for five. But un I, it's not going to matter. I lose next attack. I'm just going to do it. You never know. Someone could press skip their, their turn by mistake. You never know. It's like the fucking lottery. Okay. He is going to go for it. This. This card, man. Whoa. That is just brutal. That is brutal against my deck. Absolutely brutal. Absolutely goddamn brutal. I'm starting to wonder if Lifeline would have been better than Indestructibility. It's like, fuck. 
There we go. And I lose the game. All right, so Anime Weedbeard now up two games to one against me in round two here. Can I make a comeback? Can I make a comeback? <sighs> Indestructibility protects one of my creatures. Lifeline protects all of them, but also protects his creatures. Definitely seen Indestructibility did work as desired in that match. Whew. Good games, man. Good games. It's best of five. <laughs> yep. I hope he played his round one games best out of five. <laughs> you played your R1 games to three wins. <laughs> All right. All right, let's do this. He's like, good games, I eliminated Wingspan. Like, not quite. Ooh, ooh, this is rough. This is rough. Do I keep this hand? <sighs> Two, three, seven. Seven casting costs. Now I'm going to draw a new hand. Okay. All right, that was the right call. Right call. Right call right now. Yeah, I did. I'm just brain farting constantly today. Yeah. <laughs> no prob. It's only gonna be seen by thousands of people. <laughs> I'm a jerk. Alright, here we go. Predatory Sliver. Predatory Sliver. 2-2 two -two bear. Then again, so are my losses. Turn three, I cannot play Blue Earth Server because I do not have the mountain, but if I do hit it, that'd be absolutely wonderful. I'd love to hit top deck into a mountain. Even a Terramorphic, while not ideal, would be pretty cool. Path of Exile, Path to Exile, so great against this deck, by the way. So the Firewalker, it's a 1-1. One, one. That whenever deals combat damage, it gets a counter on it. I'm not too afraid of that. He's not going to swing into this. Um, if he leaves it back to block or some shit like that, that's when Path to Exile happens to it. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to be hitting Blur Sliver anytime soon. Um, Bone Slice Sliver, by the way. Pretty high. Risk. So I can attack for... T I'm, I could trade my two. Uh, but he, Yeah, I'm going to do this because what happens is... If I leave it back to block, he's just going to burn it. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's just going to burn it. I leave it back to block. Um, that thing is ugly as fuck. Like, it's got a skull for a face. Jesus, Justin, sweet. You did a good job. This thing's terrifying. Hmm. So let's see here. All right, he's going to cast this thing. 1-3, Spitfire, flying. Scary flying creature. So I want to see what he does. Because what happens is he's now tapped out. So let me think about this for a second. He's tapped out. I could let the slit through. It's only going to be a 1-1 one, one or 2-2 two, two right now. If instead, at the end of his turn, I... Ah, fuck. Do I want to path this thing? Is it scary enough? Well, next turn, what's the worst case scenario? I get hit with like 4 or 7 damage. But if I attack a Bone Slide, I'm going to swing in for 4. Then he's going to have to decide if he wants to block or not. Oops, sorry, it took too long. I'm sorry, it took too long. I'll take the 1 damage to face. It's fine. All my removal, it's fine. It's just a 2-2 two -two creature. Not that scary. People overreact, by the way, to this card. People totally overreact to that card. And by the way, if Bone Slide Sliver lives one turn, it's getting indestructibility put on it. If Bone Slide Sliver gets to live to see another day, it is getting indestructibility because that is a creature I cannot afford to lose. So will he block? Will he block? Will he take the 4 damage? Will he take 4 damage and then know that if he wants to swing into this thing, it's a 3-3 three, three double strike? Of course he's just going to remove it. Of course he's just going to remove it. He's got Flames of the Firebrand. He's got 5 cards in his hand. Not, I am not going to cry for him when he burns my creature. He could also have some lower damage burn spell and just come in. He could just ignore this altogether. Leave, yep, Flame Slash, 4 damage to face right here. Boom. Boom, right off the board. And is he going to do non-combat non -combat damage to me? Is he going to do it? Oh! Oh, God, that is painful as fuck. He gives this creature double strike. Giving this thing double strike is bad. Giving this thing double strike is bad. Everything that deals double strike could be totally bad for me. 
So I have to choose. Do I pass to exile his creature when he pays to equip it? So he wasted two mana. Do I sit around and... Oh! Well, there's a solution. Just path both his guys. Just path both of them. It's going to ramp him like crazy. What I could do is just path this thing. Then swing in for the two. And then wait. Yes, that's what I'll do. That's exactly what I'll do. So I get in my two damage now. This thing gets out of my way. Because I don't have any way to deal with flyers. Other than removal, which is what I'm using right now. Get my two damage in. He will pay. He will definitely pay the two mana for this. And then um, that'll kind of fuck up his... Uh, his his mana calculations there. He's seeing a twelve life. So it depends what he's gonna do. Let's see what he's gonna do. He's gonna play the fly fire shrieker. Fine. Fine. Then he's gonna swing. Then I'm gonna path it. Because I'm not taking six damage to the face. Probably should have just done it sooner, because I want him to commit. I want him to commit. Boom. Okay. Now hopefully he does not have burn. Because I would really like to drop indestructibility on this thing. And, like, is this one of those times where, like, do I play Armageddon? Oh, fuck. I could play Blur Sliver and swing in for four. I could play Burns. Yeah, that seems like the better idea. Seems like the better idea. If he doesn't have instant speed removal, seems like the better idea. If he's got something scary, like some big-ass scary creature. Oh, more than four, actually. It's going to be a the 3-3. Three, three. It's going to be for five. So, if he, he needs to have instant speed removal, was he... He can't have Chandra's Fury. He could possibly have Searing Spear, but there's only one in the deck. Looks like he's taking five to the face. So if he doesn't have a solution next turn that's like a, a good solution, he's going to be in trouble because indestructibility um, is going to be a problem for him. Or Armageddon, possibly. And this is a scenario where I would feel pretty safe to be like, all right, I'm an Armageddon, depending on what he plays here. I'm a 17, he's a 7. He's getting a Grim Lava Mancer on the board. He's going to have Summoning Sickness. Is he going to attack... Attached fire trigger to it, he is, which tells me that whatever he has in his hand is. I don't. What could he have? He has tons of mana. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's got lots of mana. So what could he possibly have? Instant speed removal. It's a double strike creature. It's a double strike creature. So what I'm going to have to do here is play my indestructibility on this guy. Now it's very possible he has instant speed removal. He's waiting for me to do something like this. He has double strike. He's willing to trade here. If I play indestructibility, there is no more trade. I could get two for one. But I don't really have a choice. This is what's going to prevent me from losing in normal combat. He does not have the instant speed removal. And now I get to swing in for five again. And now, now he is in a boatload of trouble. He's going to chump. He's going to chump block. Oof. And I'm going to hold on to lane in my hand. Don't need, to, don't need to play it just yet. Post Armageddon. If he doesn't play something that absolutely fucks up my entire game plan, it's Armageddon time. I can't, I don't, I, he has five cards in his hand, what could possibly, you know what he probably has in his hand, he probably has like, he probably has those deathly enchantments, like the enchantments that like, double the amount of damage you take and stuff like that. Do I drop the thorn caster to get the extra damage and lure it out? Um, yeah, that feels like the smart play. If he kill, he can't, he can't kill everything. He can't kill everything. And it's got haste. So there we go, alright. So that's what he, I guarantee you, what he has in his hand Holding enchantments. Just a guess. Alright. GG. I'm going to guess that he has like um, Furnace of Wrath and things like that. Because then I wouldn't play them. He, he can't afford to double all damage. He can't afford Vortex and four lands. Okay, so I was right. He did have Vortex and he just had a lot of lands. So that's actually a good thing I didn't cast Armageddon because he could have recovered from lands. And here we go. Bam! Take the damage to the face. Tying it up. Wingspan TT 2 2. We are going to the final match. Game 5, ladies and gentlemen. Game 5. Hopefully my hard drive doesn't crap out. Because I've recorded a lot of stuff now and it would be a damn shame. Alright, alright, alright. This is it. GG so far. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do it. It's time to duel. It's time to duel. All right, here we go. All right. This is not a bad starting hand. A little slow, but I got my turn three play. I got some mana fixing. I got some bomb cards, and I'm on the draw. Seems like a good idea. 
I'm a little wary about Bone Slice Sl Sliver. Like, it's a really good card, but so easily removed by his deck. At the same time, it's basically like if he taps out, and I guess situation to play it, like the game is over. And here, Thorncasters, you know, they're evil. Bone Slice Sliver's evil. Fate's Fetters is good against his particular deck. Go get a Forest, by the way, before I forget. That's the other thing, by the way, when you commentate, everyone's like, Wingspan, you made all these mistakes in your game. How could you not realize that two of your permanents added up to be an even number that across his board in three turns would add up to, like, okay, well, listen, I'm trying to talk here, trying to think, plan, record, worry about my computer overheating. I got a lot of stuff going on, so doing my best, doing the best that I can. That is a really bad turn two play for me. That is bad. That is... I could be taking damage to face. Now, of course, he only has, what is he, he has Searing Spear. Does he have Shock? He's got one Shock. He's got uh, Chandra's Fury. He, this deck is actually not that good as far as triggering Kiln Fiend um, goes. Oh, it's whenever you cast an instant sorcery, not whenever it deals damage to someone. All right. So never mind. I take back what I said. His deck is fine. It's scary. Does he have the third land? He does not have it. Always good for me. That is good. That's good. That is good. All right, here we go. High strength. No, I'm not playing this. I'm not playing this. By the way, Armadillo Cloak is strictly better than Unflinching Courage. People are like, oh, the creature's got plus two, plus two, and lifelink and trample. Yes, but also in the old ones, like whenever the creature deals combat damage, you gain that much life. So you could put it on your opponent's creature, and then they could not damage you with it. Oh, fuck. Well, there goes my plan. There goes my plan. Well, now Face Fetters is now just a real expensive arrest. Um, <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. Bone Slice Sliver and Swing In. Get those guys off the board. Or I could arrest this guy and Swing In for two. It's only two damage, though. No, I'd rather cast a Bone Slice. Force him to use some removal next turn. Leave my creatures on the board. I don't know what he's got in his hand. He's sitting on three lands. He's, he was kind of mana, not mana screwed. I wouldn't call sitting on mana for one turn mana screwed just yet. But he's definitely sitting on some more expensive cards. He's letting the four damage go through. He's not willing to lose Kiln Fiend, which tells me he is coming in for something big next turn. Now my guy does have double strike. So unless he burns this thing out, which is certainly possible, um, it's going to win in a battle versus Kiln Fiend. Like straight up. Like boom, look at those sights. Bam, Flame Slash coming in. This guy dies. So I feel like next turn, depending if I draw land or not, I'm not sure what the best play is. One play could be, if I draw land, I could play, if it's a farce, I could play Predatory, draw Predatory, and then also play on Flinch and Courage. Oh, no, if I draw land, I'll play uh, this Sliver and then kill this thing. And then, yeah, that'd be great. Depending what he does. He's got three lands now, and he's tapping out. Perfect. Perfect. This is, by the way, time for me to be like, all right, Face Fetters, also a totally valid option um, to make this thing not attack ever again. Okay. <sighs> because I cannot afford for that thing to end up having double strike. That would be incredibly bad for me. The problem is, if I get Thorn, Cast, or Sliver, <sighs> then I can just kill it. Fuck. That whole life thing. This, it was just a really good play. Um, so the reason I'm doing that is a couple of reasons. If I play Predatory... The problem is, if he just attacks next turn, um, if he if he burns predatory and just attacks next turn, then I would be in a lot of a lot of problem. I would have a lot of problems. I would be. I he could equip this to give double strike and use some spell, and it would be like four. I, he could have lethal next this turn. He would have. He could, it was definitely very possible he could have lethal this turn. So I really had to um, avoid that. Is he going to attach fire shrieker to it? Is he going to do it? I really hope I hit the land. I really need to hit a land. Drop Thorncaster Sliver, swing and kill this, one damage to his face, and um, then one damage through combat. And then give him something that he really absolutely needs to remove. Come on. Land, 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 land. Not a land. Fuck. All right. What's better? To get a 3-3 or make all my... Yeah, no, it's probably better to do this Predatory Sliver. He's going to have a 2-2 guy. Then my Predatory is there. I can always cast this thing next turn. And he could just... It's only going to be 3-3. Three, three. He might be able to burn them out. That's the problem. The problem with this thing is he can definitely kill it. Now, can he? He's got to remove two cards from his graveyard. Okay. I feel like I need more creatures on the board for emergency blocking. 
Now I can block this thing. Now these guys are 2-2s. Two they can swing in with a certain level of impunity. They could trade. They could trade for the Grim Lava Mancer. If he wants to trade, we can trade. But Or he could take 5 damage for an extra face. Ooh, I'm getting an alert on my phone saying that I need to uh, play my match against anime Weedbeard. Hey, it's past wingspan. Like, give me the call up. Bill and Ted style, reminding me that future me has to uh, keep on my promise. All right. All right, let's see. He needs creatures on the board. He has no creatures on the board. He's hitting five. What kind of creatures does he have at five? What kind of creatures does he have at five? Or he has to burn. I could, I could see him burning this thing. I would consider burning it. He's got three cards in hand. If he has Magma Phoenix, that's bad. Magma Phoenix would be bad, but he, I don't think... Oh, my God. Furnace of Wrath, really? What? Is that it? That's GG. That's GG. Furnace of Wrath, I think... Is there is no way it was going to help him this match. So I'm going to take four, but then the problem is I I think that's it. I think the game is over. I think the game's over. I don't think there's anything that's going to. Is there anything in his deck that would save him? He's about to take eight damage and lose. Is that it? GG, GG, man. All right. And uh, you know, not that I'm a jerk, but I just like to be more safe than sorry. Everyone, I'm Wingspan TT from TopTreeTactics.com. I am piloting Sliver Hive, making it out of round two into round three of the Top Tree Tactics Magic 2014 August tournament. This has been my match against Anime Weedbeard, the Annihilator, with his Fire Wave deck. I'm sad to see him go. Five great games. Um, really good guy. Really cool deck. Really awesome matches. Uh, I hope to see you all come back next time. Hope you subscribe. Hope you come to my website. Until then, cheers.